Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody to the Hit in the Turnbuckle podcast. I'm your host Andy Burrows and uh, yes, as you can see, I am not in my usual setup in jolly old England. I'm in Spain. Uh, I am joined by one of my co-hosts today, joining a WWE show. It's only Dave Robinson. Dave, how are you, mate? I'm good, man. I'm good. Not as good as you, though. <laughs> Wish I was in Spain. Dude, it is absolutely roasting uh here i'm not gonna lie but uh you know the team buckle we don't stop working mate i'm in spain but we're still doing a little bit uh we are just off the back of wwe's uh the second biggest pay-per-view i'd say of the year it used to be judged that way uh summer slam before we get into it mate um obviously i know you're not new to back getting back into watching the big events in wwe but uh what did you make of summer slam night last night mate it's getting uh mixed reviews shall we say online yeah i, th- I think this is the problem with with wrestling fans these days though um you know you kind of set yourself up for fall so many times you know you, you're thinking the rock's going to appear and and me and ad with kind of fantasy booking as well on the prediction show so we're guilty of it it was a fairly solid show um nothing nothing massively out of the ordinary we did get a cash in we did get a, a bit of a face off with finn balor and, and damian priest again um so we we've got perhaps a look at what's coming down the line and a glimpse into the future of WWE. Um, it, it was it was fine. It wasn't on the level that WrestleMania was or even that Money in the Bank was on for me. Um, and it was quite a long show as well. You know, it's probably one of the first, the first shows that has gone four hours for a while because obviously WrestleMania now is divided up over the two nights, which mm-hmm. for me makes it a better viewing experience. I, I prefer that. A four-hour show, and that wasn't with a pre-show. That was just the show. It, mm-hmm. it was. It's a bit of a slog, really. Um, obviously, for us as well in the in the UK, we got that, and we've got AW Collision, so it kind of eats into your day essentially. So that might play into it as well. But it was a solid enough show. Um, but we'll get into the individual matches, and I'll give you my thoughts on each one. Mm. Dude, I forgot that I was an hour ahead of even the UK. This show did not finish till six fifteen a.m. this morning for me. Yeah. So yeah, it was for it's, it is a slog. It is a slog. So Logan Paul and Ricochet kicked off the show. Um, I get more and more impressed the more I watch Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah. was it the best wrestling match ever? No. Um, I thought it's probably one of the better matches of of the night. I think the only thing I was a bit wary of was the ending. If you were in the arena, they explained yeah. it on commentary, but the ending, obviously Logan's buddy passes him the brass knucks. He lock, knocks Ricochet out, um, getting the one, two, three. But I'm guessing if you're in that arena, you're probably thinking, who's this dude on the side of the ring apron handing Logan? But it was right for us. We had Michael Cole and, you know, in our, we could hear him. Yeah. I thought the match itself, there was some good high flying moves. Uh, I think Logan looks better. And every time he steps into the squared circle, um, I was really impressed. Me and Adam and you say it all the time, get the show off to a to a hot start, to a quick start. I thought, you know, with 59,000 people in that stadium, I thought they got it off to a really good start. The only thing they let that match down, for me, if I was in the live audience as well, and kind of when you're watching on telly, was the ending. Because I'm a bit like, well, who's this dude? He didn't come out with Logan Paul. Where's he come from? How the hell is he ringside? What What's going on here? He's handed this guy the brass nuts. I mean... I thought it was a solid match, solid opening. I don't know. I think Logan's again. He's just going to be used in these big events. We probably won't see him again till Survivor Series, maybe, maybe yeah. before that. But I'm guessing Survivor Series, Rumble, some of them. But I thought it was a solid start, mate. Yeah, I, I liked the match. I enjoyed it. Um, these two have got great chemistry together. You know, we've seen it at Money in the Bank. We saw it at the Rumble. Um, I, I, it's not the finish that I would have booked. Um, as you said, it's a bit of a difficult one for those in the crowd. Unless they're watching the screen, they've really got no idea what's going on. It's just Logan Paul lands a punch and, and ricochets down for the three counts. Uh, I suppose they replayed it back on the screens in the arena, perhaps. But yeah, I think there was a better way of doing this. It protects Ricochet to a degree, so I don't mind 
them trying to protect Ricochet um, because his booking at times hasn't been great and he hasn't really been seen as a top-level talent. So the fact that he's in this featured match, one of four main events, what they were saying, um, or if this was one of them, they were saying there was four main events. Um, so I, I think they perhaps could have done a, a situation where Ricochet essentially makes a mistake or he, he goes for one move too many um, because he's desperate to beat Logan Paul after Leo, what's been said on uh, in their, you know, in-ring uh, promo segments in on Raw in the last few weeks. So it wasn't the perfect finish, but it was a pretty good match. And, and Logan Paul, as you say, he looks more and more impressive every time he gets in the ring. He looks like he's made to be a WWE superstar. Um, whether now he fully commits and he becomes full-time or whether he is just these occasional, um, you know, storylines, I think we'd, I think we'd rather see him have a bit of a run now. I think he, I think that well, kind of introductory period is over and we'd like to see him on weekly television and see what he can do. Yeah. I mean, we can kind of segue, I reckon, I don't know how they're going to do it. I reckon it might just be for an event or something. Cody Rhodes ain't got nothing to do now. Yeah. Storyline wise. I've got a funny feeling they could chuck Logan in with him for Saudi Arabia, payback, something like that. Because Brock Lesnar allegedly is gone for a while, uh, which brings us on to the second match, which Cody B. Brock. Yeah. Um, it was your typical Brock Lesnar match, really. Your typical Cody Rhodes match. I, I love Cody. I think he's great. I think he is going to be the man that's going to dethrone Roman Reigns. We've got to play the patient game to get to WrestleMania. I enjoyed the match. Um, it was getting a little bit tedious with the count outs and then, and then another count out and then another count out and Cody breaking that that the, he got in at nine, he come in the ring at eight and he, you know, yeah. that was getting, a, but I kind of see why they've done that. And apparently the, obviously Cody getting the win at the end, it wasn't apparently the Brock Lesnar passing the torch. So we say that everyone's saying it was that what apparently according to Triple H and the scrum afterwards, that wasn't planned. That was nothing that they had spoke about. That was purely, Brock Lesnar doing Brock Lesnar. Um, yeah. So yeah, what did you make of the match? What are you hoping that they do be out with Cody? He's still on this trajectory towards WrestleMania. I think I think what they're doing is Roman and the Bloodline are kind of going in that path. Cody's going in that path and they're eventually going to meet in the middle, the middle via the Royal Rumble slash WrestleMania. I think we're, we're not stupid as wrestling fans. That's where we think it's going to go. They might throw us a curveball. I can't see Roman having anything... Uh, you might even have another singles match now till WrestleMania, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, last night was his first singles match for uh, since Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Yeah. So what do you make of the whole Cody and Brock thing? I think Brock's maybe I think Brock's gone for a while now. Um I enjoyed the match. I thought it was a solid typical Brock Lesnar match. Um I suppose if Brock was if he is gonna take a leave of absence, Cody was always gonna win. I kind of like the way that they, they got to the finish. I thought it was kind of, you know, kind of inventive. I, I love Cody Rhodes. I think he's, you know, he, he doesn't really have a bad match, but what did you make of it, mate? Yeah. Uh, I, I thought this was a decent match. It's a Brock Lesnar match. So if you've seen Brock Lesnar matches in the past, uh, you know, if you like him, you'll like this. Uh, I think they could have probably made it a last man standing match, which would have made a bit more sense in terms of the count tapes. I saw what they were going for in terms of Brock Lesnar, you know, put him down and he just wanted him to stay down. Um, but at the same time, when he, he there was no urgency to try and pin him or anything like that. So it could have perhaps been a last man standing match. Um, I loved the end. Uh, if that was totally organic and Brock's just done that off the cuff, uh, I think that does, a, you know, well, Cody smiled after it. So you could probably see mm. how much it meant to Cody as well. Uh, as you say, not so much a passing of the torch, um, but kind of Brock Lesnar's stamp of approval, you know, saying this guy has got what it takes, you know, this guy is a top mm -hmm. guy. So I did I did like that. In terms of a match with Logan Paul, listen, I'm down for that. I saw a lot of Cody matches. I saw a lot of Cody matches in AEW, and he could certainly have the kind of spot fest, um, overbooked match with, with Logan Paul. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, if they move in that direction, I would have no complaints whatsoever. Um, in terms of Brock, I hope he doesn't stay away too long. Uh, he's a real asset to WWE. Uh, he gets eyes on the product. And um, perhaps now we, we'll see the face Brock Lesnar, the kind of Brock Lesnar that we had prior to the Cody feud where he was having a lot of fun, you know, and then uh, that fan, re that 
uh, Brock really resonated with the fans, I think. So, yeah, perhaps we see a, a good guy, Brock Lesnar, when he's back uh, when he's back in action. If Cody doesn't go with like Logan, what do we? What's happening next week? We've got the next pay per view is Payback. Where does he really go now? I mean, like me and Adam said a couple of weeks ago, I think they're doing it in chapters. So that chapter is now closed. Come the WrestleMania package, I reckon you're going to have all of them leading up and you're going to have this chapter, that chapter, and it's going to accommodate in Roman and Cody being back at WrestleMania. But what do we do with Cody now? If you're, so for Monday Night Raw tonight, if you were maybe booking it, where Logan Paul isn't an option for payback. And we've got, I think we've got one more Saudi Arabia pay-per-view squeezed in there. Or no, India. It's India, isn't it? They're going to India yeah. on September the, I think it's the 8th or something like that. So you've got payback and then the India show pretty close together, I think. Um, something like that. But uh, what, what would you do with Cody? But there's a couple of decent options, about perhaps AJ Styles or even Edge, um, but it would involve kind of one of those working as the heel because Cody's phenomenally popular. It sells a lot of merchandise, really, really um, you know, popular with the younger crowd as well, with the kids. So whoever it is, it's going to be a bad guy. Now, he's already been involved with the Judgment Day and obviously faced Dom. You got Finn and you got Damien there, but I think they're going to be involved with each other. So it'll be interesting to see which way they go. Uh, I don't know what Edge is really up to at the minute. I can't remember how we kind of uh, signed off last time. We last time we saw him. So yeah, Edge Cody Rhodes would be something that I'd be interested in seeing as well. Yeah, no, interesting. Uh, talking of interesting things and something again that split opinion. Didn't quite get the. A lot of people said they didn't get the point of it. The SummerSlam Battle Royal. Uh, yeah. Was this just an excuse for WWE to go? Okay, fans, we're kind of listening to you. We'll let LA Knight win this one, but you won. I don't know many battle royals where you just win them for the sake of winning them, and you don't really get anything. It was yeah. good. I enjoyed it for what it was. It wasn't great. I get why they LA Knight's won. Uh, it's LA Knight. He's over at the minute, and again, it's WWE going. Okay, we really need to get this guy on the show. Um, it wasn't the best battle royal ever. It wasn't the worst. It was kind of predictable. Omas getting chucked out by absolutely everyone after eliminating half the field. I mean, what did you make of it? Was it? It just felt like felt like a little bit of filler to me. Yeah, I don't know why we couldn't have just got a US title match. To be honest, um, I'd rather and work towards that. But at the same time, there was a lot of kind of big stars in it uh, that they obviously wanted to be part of the show. Um, you know, the fans that are paying to, to be there. And there was a lot of fans at SummerSlam. I didn't clock the attendance, but it was there was a lot there. 59,100 and something. So there's a lot of talent that they want to see as well. And, and, it, and it kind of gives them a split of... I, I don't know how, it, how it's divided in terms of the payout and then, you know, whoever appears on the show, what percentage of the gate they get. Um, But yeah, it, was, it, it seemed to be a bit of an excuse to get those guys on the show. And to give LA Knight a bit of a moment, I would just rather there to be some some kind of stakes, even if it's a um, US title shot. That would have done down, it for me. Down the line. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there could have been a little bit more creative with what the winner received, but it does give LA Knight the opportunity to come out on SmackDown, cut a promo, say I won this, you know, I won this battle royal, and perhaps issue a challenge to one of the champions. Why is he as white hot as he is? I'd put the US title on him. Yeah, I'd have done that. I'd have done that by now, to be honest, because I, I don't. We've talked about Austin Theory, and and although yeah, he's not, yeah, I, 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 I'm not majorly against him. I think he's a decent talent and a good prospect, and they've spent a lot of time um, on, and they obviously think highly of him. But I think the US title run since WrestleMania, and he beat John Cena. It's kind of gone off a cliff, and. Um, yeah, he was involved with um, Pretty Deadly. One of those guys is injured now. I think it's Elton Prince. So that's kind of put that story to bed for the time being. So I would have redirected it and put the strap on LA Knight. And and, and yeah, that could have perhaps led to even a fatal four-way at SummerSlam between him, AJ, mm. Miz, uh, who else was in it? Sheamus. You know, there's a, a butch even. You know, there's a fatal four-way there that could have happened perhaps, but... We got what we got. I just hope that off the back of it, and Eli like getting that moment, he can he can build on that now and take that momentum forward into a title 
a title situation and and Austin Theory seems to be the obvious choice. Yeah, I think the Battle Royal kind of had to happen as well because obviously you've got KO and Sammy, they won the show, but KO is injured. Yeah, so KO injured. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he's injured. Um, obviously, no, like you say, no US title match, no women's tag teams. Very rare that you get a, you know, quote unquote, big pay per view like this, call it old school pay per view, with not all the titles being defended. Does that surprise you? I mean, I, I was a bit. You know, no women's tag team titles, no men's tag team titles, no US title. You only had the Intercontinental and obviously Roman, and that was it. Yeah, and, and they set the up women, the... obviously the women's title as well. Yeah, they'd set up the US title match with Santos Escobar as well, uh, and you've also got not a title. Proves match. how bad it is though if you're setting it up for SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, and and you Trish Stratus, Betty Summer Lynch Slam. as well. Trish and Becky, that was that's got think... moved. Yeah, that's on Raw now on the. 14th or something I just read yeah. this morning because I completely forgot I don't get I, I mean it's so hard for me to catch up on wrestling while I'm out here you know I've got, I'm, in the, I'm in Spain it's, I've got a, a dodgy box out here but uh, trying to watch Raw I completely forgot that they'd mentioned that that match had been bumped I would rather that the flipping Ronda Rousey Shayna Baszler match had been put on the pre-show and we would got Becky I'm so surprised that we didn't get Becky Trish yeah. at SummerSlam but we've got Shayna Baszler and Ronda, which we'll move on to now. And I had a chat with uh, Josh, one of the guys that follows us on Twitter. Big shout out to him. And he was a bit disappointed that we're all kind of shitting on that match before it even started. I mean, I've seen loads of clips online today. That even when they're doing their ring, walk, ring walks, everyone's going to the bathroom. It was yeah. an MMA match in a WWE ring. You have to, you have to plan that really well. You know, Ken Shamrock's done it, like Josh said to me. Ken Shamrock's done it back in the day. Yeah. It works. This Ronda Rousey, Shane the Baszler match was awful. It didn't work from the minute they got in the ring to the minute they got out of there. Because, you know, it's a bit like back in the day when we all knew that Brock was leaving the first time. Him and Austin, yeah. uh, you know, when he was, Austin was the uh, at Mania. We yeah. all knew that he was leaving. We all know Ronda's going back to the UFC. We all know her WWE contract's up. We all knew what was going to happen here. But, the, you know, the ending, Ronda Rousey in the UFC does never tap out to that move. She never blacks out to that move. I mean, I just thought it was awful. I didn't really enjoy it. I thought the start of the show compared to the back end of it was a lot better. As it is, as the show went on, don't get me wrong, we'll get to the main event. As the show went on, I was thinking, this is, it's, it's not struggling. I mean, I, I thought the start was brilliant. I really did enjoy it. I was really hyped for it. The crowd seemed yeah. into it. Then you got Ronda and Shayna in a ring in an MMA fight, and it just didn't work for me. Obviously, Shayna Baszler picking up the win. The crowd were chanting "boring" during the match. That can't have been easy. You got fifty nine thousand people chanting "boring" at you while you're trying to do your job. Um, but they, like I said on social media, they're not wrong. It was as boring as fuck. So yeah, what did you I think thought you know. Ad told me uh, on the pre on the prediction show that in NXT they had a fight pit match and it was set up in an actual purpose made ring. If you it like, was. yeah. Um, I was expecting that. I was expecting a bit more from it. Uh, we didn't even know the 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 rules as such going in. We assumed it was going to be pass out or tap out or knock out. Um, yeah, this didn't do anything for me. And I like Shayna, to be honest. I'm I'm a bigger Shayna fan than I am Ronda. Um, and I'm glad Shayna picked up the picked up the win. Um and Shayna can talk on the microphone, but I want to see the character that we had in NXT, the the badass, you know, and um in NXT her run was pretty successful. So we'll see now what happens. But if you're Becky and Trish, you've got to be a little bit disappointed given the time that's gone into that story to not be put on SummerSlam, you would expect that match to be on SummerSlam. And when it's not on and this is on, and you get a battle royal on the card, which doesn't mean a lot, that's got to be a little bit frustrating, particularly when it's a four-hour show. Yeah, and you've got, you know, Becky was tweeting yesterday morning, um, I should have tweet, cottoned on actually, that she was just home baking. Um, you know, Rhea Ripley, not on the show apart from a, a little I think running, she's which... struggling with an injury though. Rhea. Yeah, I think, yeah, I've heard she's yeah. got a little bit of an injury. I mean, that maybe plays a big part into it. You've got KO, you've got her, you know, you've got Ronda leaving. They can't get it all on it. So, but news to, not they used to, news to pre show. Put a match on the pre show. Yeah. Put Ronda and Shayna on the pre show and give us Becky and Trish. You can't, the way, that, especially the way they build it on Raw all them weeks. I want you at SummerSlam, we're having a SummerSlam match and then it gets, it hasn't even been moved. Apparently, it was originally getting moved to payback. 
It's now been moved to Raw, not this Monday. I think Monday the fourteenth. I think that's yeah. when we're gonna. That's when we're gonna have it. So yeah, I don't know, mate. I'm not really sure. You've got uh, Raquel talk about... as well, Raquel and Rhea, which you obviously you think that would be a decent SummerSlam match, but for whatever reason, probably because of Rhea's injury, that's not happened as well. It's kind of good that there's so many irons in the fire and there's a lot of stories happening. So that's great to some degree. But you want those matches to be at least, even if it's not the blow off match. The first match, you would want that at a big setting like SummerSlam. So, a bit strange. Mm. What did you make of the women's title match? Oscar, uh, Charlotte, Bianca. Um, the Annette, I think we all knew that the cashing was probably going to happen. Uh, EO Sky ends up cashing in after Bianca picks up the uh, the win. She really sold the knee really well. I'll give her that. Some people had thought she was legitimately injured. She wasn't. She yeah. sold it really well. Um not going to lie, this match was on about 20 past five in the morning for me. So it was kind of, oh, hello. Yeah, I opened my eyes and um, EO was running down the aisle to cash in. Um, I think WWE are kind of where AEW are with their women's division. I know that sign's been gone viral, book women's wrestling better. Yeah. I think that goes across all wrestling at the minute. I don't know what's happening. It seems to have had a real, I think me and Adam mentioned this maybe five, six months ago. It had a real high where they were having their own pay-per-views. They were main event in WrestleManias. They were main event in Raws and SmackDowns. And now it's kind of like, hmm, they're kind of stuck in a rut. But then that's to their own detriment. When you don't put Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, Hall of Famer, on the show, what do you expect? I mean, EO, let's hope she gets a good run with it. I'm guessing Payback's just going to be a rehash of Bianca and EO and Charlotte. I'm... It was all right. I didn't love it. I mean, Ric Flair tweeted out that it was the match of the night and got absolutely caned on Twitter. It's like, you're either drunk, high on drugs, or it's just because your daughter's in there. I mean, all what three. did you make of it? All three. Yeah. Um, it, it was okay. There were some messy moments in this match and it just didn't. Some It just fell apart at one stage uh, and I kind of had to look away. He was kind of, I felt awkward. Um, in saying that, Charlotte, best of all time, I agree with you. She's She's superb and she brings star quality to the show uh, and she didn't look out of place at SummerSlam at all. I would have preferred Asuka to retain uh, and I thought the EO and Bailey story would, would be carrying on prior to the cash-in. Now it will be interesting which direction they go in in terms of the title uh, and what they do with the fallout because there's essentially five women there that are involved in this picture and if you put Shotzi in there as well, there's actually six so mm-hmm. uh, it's unclear which way they'll go. I think I'm I'm really pleased for EO because people were assuming that she should she would be the first woman to have a failed cash in because all of the women's cash ins have been successful and that's continued. It was heavily touted. Yeah, I remember yep. me, Adam and you talking about it at Money in the Bank and when we were together a couple of weeks ago in Bournemouth at our show, we were like talking about it and it was heavily touted. This is going to be the first failed cash in I still think that might be Damien Priest to be honest as well on the men's side I think he'll be another failed cash in but we'll get to that um yeah I'm just I can't get excited about women's wrestling across the board I mean I watched a little most of Dynamite this week caught a little bit of collision so far this morning out here in Spain I just think wrestling I mean I know Paige and Renee and all that that have been vocal on social media um this morning talking about the just segueing tiny bit to the AEW side of it and the women's mm-hmm. wrestling I don't know. Do you think they've kind of dropped the ball with the women's wrestling at the minute? I mean, WWE definitely have. I mean, AEW 100% have. I mean, I know yeah. obviously um, Storm got injured, so they had to switch the women's titles over on AEW. But women's wrestling in general have gone from here, pay-per-views, main events, to back to being the mid-card and people got taking bathroom breaks. Yeah, uh, there's definitely creatively a lot to be done, much to be done. I mean, it, the actual in-ring action at times is pretty good. I mean, on collision, um, Mercedes Martinez and Chris Lander went one-on-one and it was a decent match. It was pretty good, actually. Um, but there's no real story to go along with it. Um, and it takes time to kind of implement these things. So you would like back backstage now that they are doing those things and they are saying, come on, let's get this, let's get this back where it was, you know, women's revolution and slotting them into the card in exactly the same prominence with the men. And we get the money in the bank matches now and we get the rumbles and that's great, but that should have really just been the start. Uh, And this is the negativity that came off the back of the AEW show, got people talking again. So you'd like to think that WWE and AEW have taken note and moving forward, we're going to get a lot better. Um, There's signs of that, you know, there's early signs, 
Uh, and the talent is certainly there, so there's no excuse. Mm. Uh, talking of no excuses, Gunther uh, versus, uh, versus Drew. We knew that that was just going to be brutal. Again, this is why I go back to what I said about Logan and Ricochet. I loved the match. I thought this was really good. We kind of knew what we were going to get with Gunther and Drew. The only thing that let this down for me that seemed a bit rushed was the ending. Yeah. Which for me, I was kind of like, oh, is that it? It was kind of like they, they got through the chops and they got through everything. And then they were kind of like, oh, that's actually it now. That's all we've got. And I was like, oh, the ending was a bit, it's a bit lame duck for me. I don't know. It didn't really do anything for anyone. You know, I knew Drew and Gunther, like me and Adam and you say all the time, we knew that they can go. We knew it was yeah. going to be brutal. It wasn't as good as the WrestleMania, you know, uh, match when they when they were in the ring together. Obviously, there was more, you know, it was three of them then. But I, I just, I don't know. I couldn't, I enjoyed it. and But I kind of felt like I got to the end of that match and I was a bit like, huh, well, yeah. what, what? Is that it? And then it was done. And I was like, oh. Okay, good match, but missing something for me, that. Yeah, it, it, I think there's there's two things with it. I, I definitely expected Drew to kick out of the powerbomb, you know, because mm -hmm. Gunter had kicked out of the Claymore. So I, I thought there was a few more minutes left in this match, ultimately. But I think the biggest thing that went against this is nobody expected Gunther to lose. Uh, and it was a pretty certain, pretty much a certainty that he'd win because of how close he used to setting the record, you know, he's around 30 days away from passing days passing the honky tonk man. Tonks. Yeah. So that, I think that really went against the match. So until we we've cleared that point, I don't think anybody's going to realistically believe that Gunther's going to lose, which unfortunately, yeah, that, that affected the match for me. Are they going to keep Drew involved in this title for now? Like I say, payback coming up at uh, the India show, that's going to be a glorified house show, in my opinion. They're just, you know, they're taking it to India, but that seems to be what wrestling are doing at the minute, going to these big venues with glorified house shows. Um, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with the IC title. But yeah, he's going to break Gunther's record. He's going to break the Honky Tonk Man's record, yeah. which is going to be great. But who's like is Drew realistically going to be the next man to take that strap, or are they going to go completely left field? LA Knight, we said US title. Why not be the I see. Yeah, they'd have to switch him, wouldn't they, to Raw if the draft main means anything. Oh, the draft they, that exactly. They can they can get rid of that pretty easy. Um, I actually Gunther's my pick for the Raw Rumble. I know it's early, um, but I think he's going to win the Rumble. Uh, he was the final two with Cody last year. Um, I think Cody take on Seth. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, if if, if he's if, still got the title. Yeah. Um, I I think Cody and Re and Roman is pretty much a lock. Um, but I don't think. Cody will win back-to-back -back rumbles. I think Gunther will win the rumble. Uh, I think he's just nearly on that level now, and I think a rumble win gets him there. Um, whether he drops a title before then, I don't know. Um, in terms of Drew, he's been doing a little bit with Riddle, so maybe, maybe they're going to tag. Maybe if if Randy comes back, that'll play into it as well. Apparently he's way off coming yeah. back. According to reports, he's not even in the ballpark no. to be coming back. And he's been out a long time now, hasn't he? Been a good few years now, mate. Yeah, it's yeah, been, yeah. It's, got, it's yeah. got to be coming up to two years now since we've seen him. In yeah, a, is it that long? In a restaurant, it's well over a year. It's got to be. Yeah, it's yeah. Got to be a year and a half at least. Yeah, it isn't yeah. close to two. What was the last pay per view we saw him on? Yeah, I can't remember. SummerSlam last year, he wasn't on that. So yeah, it's, it's over a year. Yeah, yeah. So put it that way, but yeah, I. Riddle apparently they're not they they've pressed pause on because of a, his personal issues, so they're not going to do anything significant with Riddle. So if and he's in shit. a tag team with Drew, yeah, he's not your favourite, is he? <laughs> <laughs> but Drew, no, he's uh, he's not, mate. I'd like to, like you say, the drafters. If they don't do anything with LA Knight with the US title, I like. I don't know how they'd get there, but it's WWE. They could. I'd like to see LA Knight maybe take it off yeah. him because is he is he. Above the US title status, probably where he like fan wise, he definitely is because that US title has just died, it died on its ass. LA Knight could potentially bring it back up. Um, the IC title, Gunther's taking it back to where it used to be Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, all them kind of days. The Miz, when he originally bought it back and had it for that absolute amazing run that he had with it. So I think you have to be very careful who you put these titles on now because it's yeah. got, like you say, it's got to mean something. It has to mean something to the audience. It has to mean something to what's going on. Don't just keep... I mean, 
I don't know. The US title for me is just it's just dead. He hasn't, you know, hasn't done it. I'm just, I'm kind of the same on the tag teams, though, on the men's yeah. tag teams. I mean, there's no real tag. Once the Usos have now done what they've gone and they've segued and gone, frankly, now you've got the street profits maybe coming back with the, the hurt business and they could get involved, kind of thing. But yeah. for me, the outside of Roman, the titles in WWE not yeah. really doing anything, are they? I mean, I don't know what you think. I don't think they're doing much. Yeah, what what I would like for the the IC title, my personal preference, and it is because I'm a big Butch fan, uh, Pete Dunne. I would love Pete Dunne to be the man to to take that title, and then that leads into a feud with Sheamus. Obviously, the IC title is the only belt Sheamus hasn't won, and they played mm-hmm. on that at, Ca- at Clash in the Castle or Clash at the Castle. So going into like WrestleMania time, if we could have Butch Sheamus, obviously they're part of the Brawling Brutes, but you know they turn on each other and they fight over the IC title. Sheamus has never won it. I think there's a good story that could be told there. Um, but yeah, I, I I can't see Gunther losing that title for the next month, uh, and I don't. I doubt he'll drop it straight after doing that record. So yeah, they're in a bit of a bit of a. Strange situation, really, with the title. Other than the world titles, um, there's no uh, and Gunther. Everything else is kind of up for grabs. Yeah, it's, everything else is just plateauing, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Seth Rollins, one of the shocks of the night for you, defeating Finn. The whole Damien Priest thing and the briefcase and was he trying to help Finn? Was he not trying to help Finn? Was he going to cash in? Everyone said that we all thought that Finn was winning here. So it played into the the storyline with the Judgment Day, as in Damien with the briefcase, Finn with the title, and Seth going up, you know, maybe having a rematch at Payback, hence why it's called Payback. But I was a bit shocked that they didn't switch these titles up because I thought that would have been a good way to go. Put the title on Finn, have Damien with the briefcase, then all of a sudden you're just looking over your shoulder 24-7. I mean, they teased it in this match. Finn didn't want to use the briefcase to hit Seth. Uh, the match itself was probably the match of the night, in my opinion. It was definitely four, four and a half stars. Uh, so don't want to sound like that twat, Dave Meltzer, but I thought it was probably the match of the evening for me. Um, I was surprised at the ending. It's going to be interesting to see where they go now. Seth's just going to be locked in another feud with the Judgment Day. I'm guessing, from what I'm hearing at Payback, it's going to be Priest, Finn and Seth in the main event from what I'm hearing is yeah. the plan but what did you make of it where do you think they're going to go with it did it surprise you that you know we we assume that SummerSlam and Wrestlemania that there's going to be at least one big title change not disrespecting the women's title but I thought Seth was dropping this yeah I think that's exactly why they did the cash in because if they hadn't there wouldn't have been a single title change now, on our mm. prediction show, I actually went with Seth because uh, I just had the doubt. And, and it wasn't my opinion on Finn Balor. I just think their opinion, maybe Vince McMahon's opinion, because we know he's still pulling the strings, uh, oh, is that Finn Balor isn't, isn't on that level. Um, yeah, he has been in the past, but it's a long time ago now, seven years as we as was played into in this match. Mm. So I hoped, and, and it was difficult. I was 50-50 at times going in, but I really hope they did give it Finn. Um, but I did predict Seth. So disappointed to a degree, although it is fairly early in Seth's reign to be losing it. I just think Finn Balor loses too many big matches and that really kind of moving forward, you can't see him getting past that upper mid-card level anymore. You can't see him at the top of the card because if you just keep losing big matches, it's just not believable that he's going to win one. Uh, mm, and then you don't foresee him as the champ. When can you see the cashing coming in for the men's now? Because obviously, like I said, payback, the India show, then that pretty much leads to Survivor Series. Don't get me wrong, it could happen on a Monday Night Raw. I mean, do you think again, it's happened a few times with the men's money in the bank briefcase. Look at Otis and look at, you know, they've done it in the past. Do you think WWE have done it now and all of a sudden gone, oh, I ain't sure about this. I mean, could there be a potential match where Finn, win- we've had it before. Uh, the briefcase is on the line. Finn could take the briefcase off Damien, something like that. I'm just not sure where if WWE have suddenly they put the briefcase, given the briefcase to Damien Priest, and that have gone, oh fuck, maybe we've made a mistake here. They've definitely done it in the past. I mean, how what would you do moving forward? I mean, if it's me, I would have done it last night. I would have put 
had Finn win the title and then I would have teased it for a good month that you know Priest is going to cash in. Uh, but then it depends how long they want the Judgment Day run to go on. Because if you think about it, if you look, if you watch last week's Raw, definitely the week before, the entire show, the whole three hours, was the Judgment Day. So yeah. do you think WWE have kind of backed themselves into a corner now and they're kind of like, oh shit, how are we booking this one going down the line? Yeah, I, I don't think that they're ready to pull the trigger on the, the cash in yet. I, I think they must have a loose idea or initial plan. Um, but I don't see him cashing it in anytime soon because there's this, you know, the storyline with him and Finn there, which will lead to something at some point. And I think while all that's going on, there's there's no need for Damien to kind of cash in. And I, I'd really like him to see him cashing in on Roman, to be honest, and going a completely imagine different Imagine if Cody direction. wins at Mania and then Priest cashed in straight away. Yeah, that would be... You'd have you to know. turn off social media. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be something, wouldn't it? You know, that would really be something. Uh, what they do in the meantime, I'm really not sure, but I can't see. I don't see Seth Rollins losing this title for a long time. Have you enjoyed the Seth run? You know, I like don't... you always. I, I listen to you guys when you talk about AEW and MJF, and I know you haven't been a massive fan of the MJF run. I mean, maybe we can talk off air. I'm not quite sure fucking what's going on with CM Punk got declared as a champion again last night. I mean, what the fuck is all that about? Another yeah. belt. Um, I'm with you with the Seth as you are with MJF. I'm kind of like, I get why they've done it and then they put him in match after match after match on Monday Night Raw because they want it to be kind of old school. And I'm like that. I like to see the title defended. I just, I don't know. I can't get as invested in this run as I feel I should be, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't think Seth really needed this run, to be honest. I think he was really mega popular. He was right at the top of the card. You're getting these mega reactions, fans all singing his theme. And maybe that's a reason to give him the title. But for me, I would have rather elevated a Finn Balor. Um, which but obviously that's not that's not in their thinking, is it? You know, Seth's their guy, and that's it. But if you look at that raw roster of regulars, and if they're not gonna do it with Cody, which which they're not, are they? That that isn't the title that Cody wants to end his story with, or this particular story with. It's it's the universal title, or you know, not this new title that's been recently uh, created. So, yeah, my my answer to the Damien Priest and what happens with it, I don't think he does anything for a while. I think he's going to hold that briefcase because I don't think they're hundred percent sure what they're going to do with it. Mm. Yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. Uh, talking of interesting, mate, let's get to it. The main event, Roman Reigns uh, versus uh, main event, Jay Uso. Um, what did you think? Um, people were... I'm big, the, the backlash is now kind of coming for this storyline because I, when I woke up early this afternoon now in Spain, I scrolled through and everyone's like, I've had enough of the Bloodline storyline now. It's boring. They need to go in another direction. I know Adam, our fellow co-host, He's kind of drawn a line now. He thinks it should go in a different direction. A lot of people are saying that Roman shouldn't have retained last night. Um, obviously, we had the whole... They teased again. The solo Sokoa and Roman kind of solo going one way, Roman going the other. And then, obviously, we had the turn. We had uh, Jimmy coming back at the end, pulling Jay out of the ring, turning on his brother. Um, that's been touted for absolutely... Years, I know these two have wanted to work together. You had to overhear on what was BT, now TNT Sport. They'd done an interview about a month ago saying how they want to do a storyline together before their yeah. careers end and they want to do it while they're in their prime. Well, I'm guessing that's where we're going now. I'm guessing that's where we're going in the next pay-per-view. We're going to have Jay versus Jimmy. We're going to have Solo kind of involved in the mix. Um, I was quite pleased that Roman kept the title. I mean, I... I it's like you said earlier about the um, the match that we all knew that wasn't wasn't going to lose. We all knew Roman realistically wasn't going to lose this. We all know that it ultimately going to be WrestleMania. Has this storyline done enough to keep you invested until WrestleMania? Um, initially, I thought because they've they've used the guy in the hood comes out and cost the challenge. So Solo come in at Clash exactly. Of the they've done it before. But after digesting it, to be honest, and thinking it through, I actually really like it. And if they were going to lead to a Jimmy and Jay match, what better way of doing it than Jimmy costing Jay the Universal Championship? Because he had Roman pinned, he'd speared him, he'd, he'd done the big splash. 
That's how we beat him at Money in the Bank uh, in terms of the big splash. That's how we beat Solo on SmackDown. So for all intents and purposes, uh, Jay was going to become the champion and Jimmy cost him that. So I think if they're going to go in that direction for a one-on-one match, great. Um, I actually think it will go triple threat. And I think it will be Solo versus Jimmy versus Jay, possibly even at WrestleMania next year. And, And you know what? If me and my two brothers were in the wrestling industry... I would absolutely, you, you're in a, a, a main or a featured match at WrestleMania against your two brothers. Uh, and I think it'd be a phenomenal match as well. So now that I've thought about it more, I actually like it because as you said, nobody expected Jay to win the title. So if he's not going to win the title, what what happens to Jay? So going, that's ready-made, that's there. Um, in terms of Roman, as you say, we're not going to see him for a while now. But nobody expects him to lose the title until WrestleMania anyway. So they kind of, they did enough for me to keep me invested in the story still. The match was fairly fairly slow at times, but that's, a, again, talking about a Brock Lesnar match, that's a Roman Reigns match. We know, you know, that that's not going to change. It's not going to be like a cruiserweight match, is it? You know, it's it's a Roman match. Um, so I think the criticism of it is a little bit unjust. Um, because for me, there's enough there to keep me interested, to keep me entertained and to keep me fantasy booking like I did, just did. <laughs> One guy who's definitely going to be involved in this storyline is because they keep doing his moves, talking about his catchphrases, don't know how, what, where, why they're going to bring him in, is the man here on my shoulder, very burnt shoulder, uh, the great one, The Rock. Uh, how they get, they, mate, I'm telling you, they bring, they're too many people are talking about him all of a sudden again. You know, they, you know, Jimmy done two of his moves in the match. Jay, sorry, done two of his moves in the match last night. We know that somehow he's getting involved in this bloodline storyline. How's he getting involved, mate? Where's he getting involved? Do we see him before the end of the year? Do we see him? A lot of people are saying that apparently it was teased that he was there. A lot. I love all this. I mean, nothing I even tweeted out. Do we see the great one tonight? It was at Money in the Bank. Apparently we were seeing Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. I love, you know. But that's yeah. why we love the internet. That's why we love Twitter. But um, oh, sorry, it's not called Twitter anymore. What's it called X. What a fucking stupid name that is, by the way. Um, how are you getting the Rock if the Rock comes back? How are you getting involved in this storyline? He is the, he's the head of the table. Yeah, well, I think I think ultimately it's a match against Roman um, to become or to be the tribal chief or uh, along the lines of the family and the bloodline. It's just whether Roman drops the title to Cody at the Royal Rumble before that, because The Rock versus Roman Reigns doesn't need the title. Um, but Cody, because you know The Rock ain't winning. No. And, and Cody is going to be the WWE Universal Champion at some point. So it's whether Roman loses the title to Cody at the Rumble and we get Rock against Roman at WrestleMania. I think that, depending on The Rock's schedule, which is pretty quiet and pretty light at the minute, um, it's on a strike. They're on strike, isn't they, in Hollywood? Exactly. That's what everyone's saying. Look, does he come back? I mean, a lot of people are saying oh, he might be a, like a special guest referee in the Cody versus Roman match at WrestleMania. Could that get the family involved? And yada, yada, yada. I mean, I, he's definitely coming back. I just can't figure out where and when. Yeah, he's not He's not finished yet. You know, he's got at least one big match in him. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure against his cousin at WrestleMania would be the match that he would want. Uh, probably the match that he's wanted for a long time. You know, years in the making, you know, they thought that it would lead to that point. So we're going to get it. Um, it's just how everything else fits in around it with Cody winning the title. Um, so uh, The Rock's daughter as well, she's in NXT or she's NXT. in Level Up, I believe. So could she mm-hmm. factor into the Bloodline story as well? Um, there's a lot of if, if buts, and maybes, but that's what keeps us coming back for more. Mm. Well, just finishing up, mate, uh, what intrigues you about the Bloodline storyline moving forward to this Friday on SmackDown? Obviously, I'm guessing it's going to be... I, I don't know if Roman... I'm, I'm thinking Roman's got to be on at least this Friday, SmackDown, the yeah. week after the pay-per-view. And then, obviously, I think... I, they say we don't see him. I mean, they said that before. We still see him at, somehow at you know, events. What are you thinking coming this Friday is going to be Jay confronting Jimmy, Jimmy explaining why he done it, yada, yada, yada. Solo's going to be conflicted. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to kind of piece the pieces together for this storyline. 
I get why people are getting frustrated with it. But right, if you said right now, say Jay had won last night, is that really where the WWE want to go with the straps? So what do you do? Roman has an immediate rematch at payback. Is Jay Uso the answer for the WWE title right right now, last night? In my opinion, no, no, no. he's not. I totally agree. Totally agree. And as I say, if he's not going to win the title, uh, I'm a big fan of Jay. So I didn't want him to just lose and nothing happens with him. And I, I, we've seen all the Uso tag team matches that we could ever wish to see. And as you say, if that plan all along was to the, for the, the brothers to work against each other, I think this is the best way they could have done it. And mm. I, we might get we might get some flack on X about that, but how how what what other way, or is there a better way to set up Jimmy versus Jay than Jimmy costing Jay the world title or the universal title? So that's why I'm probably not as negative as, as some people out there. Yeah, uh, let's finish with our grades. I know Adam gave it a four. I think did he put in our group chat this morning? Four or five? I think Adam is three or four. We we'll say three four. or four. Adam was not very high on this uh, show. Uh, I know he's not done with the bloodline storyline, but wants something different now. I think Adam made the point of the matches always end the same. You know, you look at Clash yeah. of the Castle, Solo interfered, you've got Jimmy, and there's always an interference, never a clean finish. Uh, what grading, before I give mine, Dave, what grading are you giving last night's SummerSlam? I'm giving it a six and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, get- I'm giving it I'm giving it a seven and a half, maybe an eight, but I'm going to yeah, seven and a half for me. I thought it started off really well. I was really enjoying it. Tailed off a little bit in the middle. Ronda and Shayna absolutely ruined it for me. The women's cashing, mm, okay. Battle Royal didn't mean nothing. Brock Lesnar, I thought was a great match. Um, Seth had the match of the night for me. Yeah. And I mean, the the Bloodline storyline still got me, still got me interested because I don't think there are anything, anything else is right right now for that storyline other than Roman Reigns. So for me, seven and a half, maybe an eight. And I know people are going to be like, what the fuck did you watch? I mean, I've seen some people give it a two this morning. No, I think, I think, I think we've seen much worse pay-per-views or premium live events. And if Finn Balor would have gone, have gone over last night, I'd have probably been a little bit more positive and have been up there seven, seven and a half with you. Uh, I'm just Mm -hmm. disappointed for him, to be honest. I just, I'm a big Finn Balor fan. He's so talented. He's so charismatic. Uh, I I thought they could have brought the demon out last night and he win the title, but I get that's more of a face thing than a heel thing. And it's not really a judgment day thing. Um, But you just think now, after he's, he's lost three big matches, hasn't he, to Seth? He's lost 3 0. And I know Seth lost 3 0 to Cody. Um, and ultimately, now Seth is the world champion. So it wasn't the end of the world for him. But I just fear for Finn Balor. Um, maybe, maybe after Damien cashes in at some point, maybe Finn beats Damien to become the world champion. That's down the line. We get getting ahead of myself. But just coming off SummerSlam and me, my immediate thoughts are is disappointment for uh, Finn Balor, but excitement for Jey Uso because if that's the story that they've wanted, personally, they've wanted to play out on WWE TV for a long time, then they've been thinking about this the whole lives and they have they they obviously have a lot of input into the Bloodline story themselves. So I'm interested to see what we get and um, whether we do get that triple threat at some point as well. Yeah, no. Well, let's see what happens, Dave. Uh, it's a, another hit in the turnbuckle podcast in the books. Uh, I'm now either going to go to a restaurant or quickly jump in the swimming pool because it is fucking roasting hot over here. Uh, but make sure you go and check us out on all socials. You can find us on Twitter, like we will say, at HCT Buckle. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. We are on, I'm still saying it, we're on Twitter. I can't call it X, Dave. That's such a shit. What? Who is Terrible. It? Awful. Find us on Twitter at HCT Buckle. Find us on Instagram. Find us on TikTok. Uh, often imitated. Never. Oh, no, I can't do it. I'll leave that to Adam. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Hit in the Turnbuckle uh, podcast. I've been your host, Andy Burrows, with my good friend and co-host, Mr. Dave Robinson. Till next time, everybody, buckle down. Stay safe.